final leg. So we did speak about the veteran athletes who might be affected by this Olympic delay moving to 2021, but I want to speak about some of the athletes who might actually benefit from these Olympics being delayed till next year. So let's get into it. First off, I have Elaine Thompson from Jamaica. So she is the 2016 Olympic champion at both the 100 meters and the 200 meters. But ever since then, she's been dealing with some injuries. Back in 2017, she caught up with an Achilles injury. And many people remember at the London Diamond league that year she actually won the race running in flats and basically running sneakers but she ended up getting fourth place at those world championships because of the injury that she had and she would continue on with injuries 2018 she actually had to end her season short 2019 she unfortunately didn't get a medal at the world championships again and then she pulled out of the semifinals in the 200 meters in Doha because of the Achilles injury saying that she didn't want to aggravate it going into the Olympic year so I think this 2020 year off is definitely going to help her to get a little bit extra rest, be able to train towards the end of the year leading into the Olympics next year, and definitely going to be able to go for a strong defense of her Olympic 100 and 200 meter title. Of course, she's going to have a lot of competition from some of their ladies, but if she's able to rest up and get very healthy, she's definitely going to be in a great position to defend her Olympic gold medals. Now, moving over to the men's side and up to the 400 meters, we have Michael Norman from the United States. So he is the world record holder in the indoor 400 meters, and he also has a personal best run in April last year of 43.45 seconds which makes him number four all time many people were predicting him to potentially break the world record in the 400 meters but the second half of the 2019 season he unfortunately caught up with some injuries he went to usa's he ran 43.7 but he unfortunately got second place to fred curley after the race he noted that he was struggling with some injuries and he hadn't trained for two weeks leading up to the usa championships he went on to win the diamond league but in the doha world championships got through to the semifinals but had to jog it through he had some injury didn't know what it specifically was but said that he had some injuries that forced him to jog it out and not go any harder so I think this year off just like Elaine Thompson is going to definitely benefit him of course many people like I said were predicting him to potentially challenge for that world record in the 400 meters if he takes this extra year and doesn't have to rush into the Olympics into 2021 going for the Tokyo Olympics he's definitely going to be well rested and definitely in the position to potentially not only challenge for the gold medal at the Olympics Olympics, but also potentially get under his personal best of 43.45. So keep a lookout for Michael Norman in that men's 400 meters. Now back over to the women's side, but this time in the distance, we have Genzebe Debaba from Ethiopia, one of the greatest distance runners in the history of track and field. In the 1500 meters, she is the world record holder in the event. She's also the world champion back in 2015 and also the Olympic silver medalist in 2016. Since then though, she unfortunately has not won a single global medal and she's been dealing with some injuries specifically leading into this 2019 season she did run well during the season but then after the Zurich Diamond League she pulled out of the Doha 2019 World Championships citing that she had a foot injury that she had to nurse so I think this year off is definitely going to be helpful for her there's a lot of competition in that women's 1500 meters specifically Safana San and a lot of other ladies but Genzebe Dababa again the world record holder in that 1500 meters if she's able to get healthy again because of where Safana San is running right now she she may be able to be pushed into close to her personal best, which is the world record, or maybe even to something faster. So Genzebe Dababa, definitely one who's going to benefit from this year off and going into 2021. Now let's move over to the 800 meters where I have Nigel Amos from Botswana. He's definitely going to benefit from this year off. He's kind of had an up and down career over the past eight or so years. Back in 2012, he ran that amazing race for a silver medal behind David Rudisha, where he ran his current personal best of 141 in that 800. He also got the gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in 2014 beating David Rudisha in that race but throughout his career injuries have been getting the best of him 2013 he had a quad strain which forced him out of the Moscow World Championships at the end of that year 2019 just last year he actually ran 141 in 800 meters challenging his personal best from back in 2012 showing that he's definitely going to be challenging for the World Championship title but at the London Diamond League he actually ran the 800 meters only ran a couple meters and then had to pull up lane because of a hamstring strain took some time off came back mid-season to run the diamond league final then leading into the world championships he unfortunately had to pull out of that race as well because of an achilles injury that he was suffering so injuries have been getting the best of him but the 141 races that he's been having throughout his career specifically just last year shows that he still is in contention to run something very fast and to challenge for a gold medal so look for him to get this year of rest off and then go into 2021 to challenge some of the guys like Donovan 
Kevin Brazier, Emmanuel Carrere, challenge those guys for a gold medal in Tokyo. Still on the men's side, but this time in the field events, we have Derek Druin from Canada. He has been super dominant in the early part of his career. 2015 world champion in the high jump and 2016 Olympic champion in that high jump. But ever since that Olympic gold, he has been struggling with injuries, which has derailed him for this part of his career. He actually noted at those 2016 Olympics, he was competing with two stress fractures in his lower back. So really commendable for him to be able to get that gold medal. But he also had an Achilles injury, which forced him out of 2016 to defend his world championship title. And then he had a spinal injury, which left him with a bulging disc in the back of his neck. So that has set him out significantly, especially because it's the high jump. So he really couldn't compete from that. And ever since then, he's been trying to get back from that. He's competed a few times very sparingly and not at some very high heights, but he's been noting that he really wants to get back at things. He wants to defend his Olympic title in Tokyo. So I think this year, because he's going to be able to rest or get a little bit more rest and then not have to force things back, he's going to be able to really get back in 2021 and challenge some of the guys like Barshim for that high jump gold medal. So keep a lookout for Derek Drew and let's see how he recovers from his injuries. Now back on the sprint side, we have Daphne Schippers from the Netherlands. She is one of the greatest 200 meters in the history of the sport, 2015 and 2017 world champion at the 200 and also the silver medalist at the Olympic Games in 2016. She has a personal best of 21.63 seconds, which makes her number three all time in the 200 meters. But 2019, she unfortunately had suffered some injuries. She got to the 100 meter final in Doha, made it through the heats and the semifinals, but she unfortunately pulled out of the finals, didn't show up to the start line because of an abductor muscle strain. So couldn't race in the 100 meter finals and effectively had to pull out of the 200 meters. So couldn't defend her title there. I think because she's been a little bit up and down in her career since 2017, 16 or so, she's definitely going to benefit from this year off to really get things together. I know she's switching coaches as well. So she's going to be able to really focus in, dial in to potentially go for that Olympic gold medal in the 200 meters. A lot of ladies are definitely going to be competing from Dina Asher Smith to Elaine Thompson. But I think Daphne Skippers is going to really get back on things and potentially go for that gold medal and a really fast time. So keep a lookout for her with this year off. Back up to the distance races, we have Amaz Ayana from Ethiopia, one of the most dominant and really surprising athletes in the history of track and field. 2016 Olympic champion in the 10,000 meters and the world record holder, one of the greatest races in the history of the sport that 10,000 meter race in Rio was. But ever since then, she's been kind of up and down with some injuries and a little bit of mystery as well. 2017, she took the year off, didn't race after that Olympic Games in 2016, came back for her first race at the World Championships and managed to win the gold medal at the World Championships there. But then she unfortunately suffered some injuries. She had surgery on both of her knees in 2018, which kept her out from the entire season. 2019, just last year, she attempted to come back. She ran at the Prefontaine meet in the 3000 meters, but unfortunately finished way down in 18th place. So still recovering from those knee surgeries, didn't compete at the Doha World World Championships, but she said that she's really coming along great. She's definitely going to be able to challenge and to defend her Olympic title in 2020. Of course, the year isn't going down now, and I think this year of rest is definitely going to help Amaz Ayana. So keep a lookout for her. She's definitely going to be one to look out for and going to put on a great show at the Olympics. Now, another one on the men's side, but in the hurdles, we have Abdurrahman Samba from Qatar in the men's 400 meter hurdles now. Might be a little surprising. 2019, he actually got the bronze medal at the World Championships, but if we remember, 2018 was really a huge year for him. He managed to run 46.98 seconds, making him number two all time in the 400 meters at that time. People were really predicting him specifically to go for that world record. And 2019 started off no different. He actually ran extremely fast, beat out Rye Benjamin earlier on the season, but he unfortunately suffered some injuries mid season, kept him out from a couple races. Then when he came back for the Doha World Championships, that was his home championship, so he had to perform there. But I think this year, off is definitely going to benefit him and put him back in the conversation for that world record. He's going to be in contention with Carson Warholm, with Ry Benjamin, all three of these guys in 46 second range. Once he's healthy, all three of these guys are really going to be challenging for that world record. So Abdurrahman Samba from Qatar is definitely going to be benefiting from this year off. Back on the field event side, I have Anita Vidalczyk from Poland. She is probably the greatest athlete over the past decade on the women's side. My pick for the greatest female athlete over the past decade. She has every accolade in the book. Two-time Olympic champion, four-time world champion. She dominated the hammer throw world record holder. Absolutely dominant. But in 2019, she actually had surgery on her left knee and that kept her out from the 2019 world championships. I think she would have been able
able to come back in 2020 and absolutely dominating the rest of the field because of how amazing she's been. But this year is going to even step that up a bit further. She's going to come back in 2021 rested a lot better and potentially go for some farther throws and definitely going to be looking to defend her Olympic gold medal in that women's hammer throw. Now we also have Kevin Mayer from France in the decathlon. 2016 he got the silver medal at the Rio Olympic Games. 2017 he actually won the gold medal at the World Championships and then 2018 he broke the world record in the decathlon breaking Ashton Eaton's world record. Going into 2019 as the world record holder he unfortunately had to pull out of the meet because of an Achilles injury so this year is definitely going to benefit him taking the year off and then potentially improving upon the silver he got in 2016 going for gold in 2021 Tokyo. Now from Kenya we have Elijah Managoy in that 1500 meters the 2017 world champion at 1500 meters. Unfortunately an ankle injury cut his 2019 season short and didn't allow him to defend his title but what's really notable is he is the last person to have beat Timothy Chiria who is currently the most dominant 1500 meter runner. He's the last person to beat him both in 2019 and 2018. The only person to have done so in those two years. So because of injury, little setback, but this 2020 rest off is going to help him and potentially get on top of the podium in 2021. I think it's going to bring a great duel between Timothy Chariot and Elijah Managoy in that men's 1500 meters like we've seen in the past couple years. So keep a lookout for him in that 1500. Finally, from Ukraine, we have Bondarenko in that men's high jump. One of the greatest high jumpers in the history of the event. 2016 Olympic bronze medalist. He's also a 2013 world champion and 2015 silver medalist. But 2014 was really the big year where he had some great duels with Motaz Aysabarshim from Qatar. He has a personal best of 2.42 meters, which is one of the greatest in the history of the men's high jump. But because of knee surgery that he had over the past couple years, he's been struggling to come back the past couple years. He did compete in 2019. Unfortunately, didn't medal. But I think this year is going to help him to really rest up, get better for the Olympic Games, and potentially go for something really big, including with Derek Druin and with Mutaz Aysabarshim. So keep a lookout for Bondarenko. So despite us all wanting the Olympics to happen as soon as possible, these are just some athletes that I think are going to benefit from this year off and definitely going to go into 2021 really well rested and definitely going to challenge for some medals. Leave a comment below. Let me know any other athletes you think might actually benefit from this year off leading into 2021. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be back again for the next video. Thanks.